going to like these shows, you didn't feel different. You kind of you felt you felt normal because people either had like colored hair, or piercings, or tattoos. Everyone would come out to support, um, you know, like local music. You didn't feel different, but you felt normal. I want to do like fire advertising or promo. Like I know a couple places. I know a couple people. Like. He's like, yeah, okay. So I started doing like flyer advertising. Welcome back everybody to The Social Bridge. Today I have a great guest for you. I have Raven who does a lot of different things here in Ocala. She's also great friends with Matt Gray and also Corey Nelson who I've also interviewed. I'm excited to introduce her to you guys and for you to learn more about her. So let's get started. All right, so how are you doing today? I'm doing all right, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. Hopefully it doesn't, like I said, hopefully it doesn't rain. Last time, I swear, I think in most of my videos you can hear like thunder on it. Knock on wood. <laughs> so I'm hopefully it doesn't rain. For sure. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do, because I know you do a lot. My name is Raven Chase. I am 25 years old. Um, I work five forms of different employment right now in Ocala. Um, the first one is a big box retailer in a warehouse. Um, the second one is Ocala Audi's Market with Matt Gray, Stephanie Gray, and Isabella, and Scarlett. Um, Ocala Audi's Shop and um, Geek Fest. And then the business I started at 16 years of age called the BTS Project, stand for Beat, going behind the scenes. All right, so let's talk a little bit about that one. Okay, so, which one? Was it one when you started when you were 16? BTS. When I was 16? Yeah. All right. So um, the business BTS project stands for going behind the scenes, helping the Central Florida community, but also putting a touch on mental awareness, such as suicide awareness, trying to get that suicide rate down because suicide is the 10th cause of death in the U.S. and people pass away every 35 to 75 seconds approximately. And um, being age 16 was a very tough time for me. I came from a... Um, a household, what most people would call a, uh, a broken home, per se, um, and pretty much um, every you didn't feel like the black sheep in the room. So is that why you started BTS? You kind of wanted to like recreate what you what made you feel more comfortable in yourself and find you? Yeah, um, mental health is um, super important to me, and going through like a rough time in my teenage years, um, I wanted to create like a safe haven environment for. Um, the local community. Yeah, no, I think definitely Ocala needed that. I, I know it's getting better, but I back like when my my um, wife's family's from here originally, and they knew um, like the lead singer of Day to Remember and like all of that. So they they my wife talks a lot about how Ocala was very um, anti, and I, I mean I mentioned this before, but like how anti you know, punk scene, I guess you could say it was. If you didn't fit like that Christian, good looking mold, it was really hard to exist. I don't know how old you are. 25. Oh, you're 25 too. Yeah. Okay, so you're yeah. the same age as me, so. Hard to fit in. Yeah, it's hard to fit in. I think, especially, I think it's getting a little bit better now, because I think Ocala's just, with the art scene and everything, it's getting to be a little bit more open, especially with like the oddities market. Like, I mean, I don't think Ocala would have been, I don't think people in Ocala would have been okay with that, like even five or 10 years ago at all. <laughs> For sure, and it's definitely changing right now between um, the Ocala Audis market to events like uh, like the first Friday art walk to, um, oh, by the way, a uh, clothing swap. I did a clothing swap with uh, Esme Bancroft and Amanda Hickson um, in the downtown um, citizen circle to where people before uh, back to school would bring in like uh, donations and then people would like trade off like clothes offhand. So, I know I yeah. saw that because um, <laughs> I actually I've I interviewed and I've met Danae and I know she was part of that too wasn't she? Yeah. Yeah no she's pretty. Good people. Yeah no she's really cool yeah. Good ball light. <laughs> yeah no she's 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 a lot. She's really great though but she's a ball of energy. For sure. <laughs> yeah. Every time I see her in public and like it's Ocala and it's a small town you bump into certain people and every time I see her I'm like hey she's like hi Raven. I know. I, I'm like hi. I feel like you guys are like polar opposites like you're like she's like this little ray of sunshine and then there's like you and I'm like yeah. she's always wearing like bright colors yeah and she's just like she's oh, really like the great. emo gothic setup I know yeah <laughs> I was like I dude I am stuck in 100% in my space years and back when you wore blue jeans and you're trying to put like um you know like the little disc it's like come on fit <laughs> and you're trying to run like, yeah <laughs> but no dude um 
she's actually one of my favorite locals. Yeah, no, she's great. For sure, she's but great. I just feel like <laughs> like seeing you two like together. Oh, like be, side yeah, by side. side. <laughs> yeah. Just like two different kinds of people. No, she's great. Um, no, she is. I she's love great. working with her. Um, because when we showed up, um. She's like, okay, this is what we got to do. I'm like, okay, what do I got to do? She's like, I want you here, here, here. I'm like, I got you. <laughs> so, I know. Yeah. She's like a ball of energy. She's great. No, I, I really, I think she's really great. But <laughs> that was totally random. But let's talk a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. No, it's okay. It's just like, I know you're right. Because like I interviewed her. And so like I kind of got to know her. And just like for me, my mental image of you two like interacting. And I haven't even really talked to you that long. But I'm like, I can just envision it. And it must just be like fun to watch. That's just me. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'm weird. For but, sure. Yeah. <laughs> But um, so let's talk a little bit about like the oddities market and what you do for, for Matt and let's kind of talk about that. So um, the Ocala oddities market, I've been to every Ocala oddities market down my belt, all except, um, I want to say like summertime, I went to Rockville for a weekend, okay. but all the other markets I've been to, I've been to every market since day one. Um, in the very beginning, like in the middle of August, I reached out to Matt Gray and I'm like, hey, do you need someone to do like flyer advertising or promo? Like I know a couple places, I know a couple people, like he's like, yeah, okay. So I started doing like flyer advertising and started like giving out to like like little mom and Paul shops. And I think the little mom and Paul shops are really cool because I'm um, growing up in like a a military to whatnot background. My dad and I, every time we'd go for like a vacation, we'd go to like these little mom and pop shops and to appreciate offhand because they're completely different from, you know, the big retailers and uh, whatnot. Uh, off topic. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. No, I think that's, I think that's yeah. important to mention too because I'm glad to see Ocala like getting some other things besides just like another car wash because for real, like it's been one, one car wash after another. Like we could be like the car wash capital of America, I think these days. For I'm sure. like, I'm like we haven't brought anything new in. So I'm glad to see the oddities marking, bringing, bringing in like new stuff and like doing something different because I think Ocala needs that. I think we need something different besides just the typical like bougie shop that's really expensive and nobody really cares about that much anymore so I'm for excited sure. about that but um so you do that for them and then do you um are you going to be helping with the new locations that they're going to be doing so like in Lake County for sure and then I think in Citrus County too right I think Citrus I know about Lake County okay. um Citrus I'm not sure, sure. but okay. most likely okay yeah no I knew offhand. I knew with a lake that they have the next one coming up, what's in October 22nd, I think? October 22nd. Second, yeah. I really like the... Mises Fairgrounds. Do you... Oh, wow. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's going to be a pretty... Or what are you guys... What are you guys doing it there? I'm familiar with the campground. Is it like... Um, do you know or you don't know I'm yet? not too familiar. Oh, okay. Um, same time, I'm not... I can't give out sorts of information, but I'm not too familiar. But um, I'm sure if you guys check out um, our social media, like Facebook or Instagram or our website... Um, there be like upcoming details for it for sure. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That's awesome. Yeah, no, did you help? I love the I love the octopus that he did. Was that your idea or was that his? That was Matt's. That was Matt's, okay. I think that was Matt's idea. Okay. I wasn't yeah. sure if you like did that stuff for him or if it was him that did that. I wasn't really sure who, who did all of that. Somebody else. Somebody else. <laughs> okay. I got you. Yeah. Um so what do you think? You think um the oddities market is gonna keep up with its popularity? What do you think about all that? For sure, um, it's definitely um, what we talked about that Ocala needs. It's definitely a different and a very peculiar market to like uh, the Venus flytraps, to uh, the jumping spiders and the bone art and taxidermy and um, whatever peculiar and every market. It's always a cool but new experience because you meet a whole different kinds of crowd and it's great. No, I think it's awesome. I know you said that they were on television, right? Were yeah, you guys on? Um, ABC News, twice, for sure, WCGB. Okay. Awesome, cool. Yeah, I know that. And, and then you guys had, like, a write-up in, like, the Ocala News, and then they come out to, like, the first one or something like that. I think uh, Ocala Star Beta. Ocala Star Beta, and, that's uh, who it was. Oh, yeah. the Ocala Magazine as well, and yeah. 352 Things to Do in Ocala. Awesome, cool. Yeah, I knew it was in a bunch of different things, so I just wanted to ask about that. Now, I want to kind of, like, go back to BTS. I wanted to ask, like, so what exactly do you guys do on, like, a general, like, um, 
like meetup, I guess I should say. I don't know really what to call it. What are you, like an event? Do you, I guess, some of your events? Oh, gotcha. So normally um, when I'm booking um, bands or artists offhand, I normally book anything out to um, six to 12 months to advance. So um, there's kind of like the okay zone. Um, I try to always not book out anything like less than two months away because nope. <laughs> <laughs> offhand. Um, so pretty much my team and I, um, Chelsea, Michael, Hunter, and Madison, and a couple other people, they work for FIRE. Um, we all get together. Um, I'm like, hey, this is the set list, or hey, we're doing like a raffle offhand, or um, we always talk about like the band load-ins, band load-outs, and um, if we're doing like for like a benefit, for instance, we did a benefit at our very first show in Florida in a place called Tavares, called Jonesy's Coffee, Save Jonesy's Coffee, Coffee of Horrors. Um, we did a, like NAR charity benefit for a really amazing company called To Write Love in Her Arms, Twola, out of Melbourne, Florida, at uh, the Hardback Cafe up in Gainesville. Okay, cool. So, yeah. Awesome. Do you guys have any new events coming up or no? Um, not currently at this time. Um, I'm kind of, I have like this idea for like some sort of a festival. It's just kind of finding um, the right connections. Okay. At Good. the moment. No, I think that's really cool. Yeah. So what do you, so like basically like you just bring in artists and musicians to come together and like have an event where everybody's welcome. I'm just going to yeah. try, okay. So I'm just trying to like shape my mind exactly like what you do with that, I guess, more per se. For sure. Okay. Okay. I wasn't sure. I was like, I was kind of like. I got to clear it, clear it up a little bit. So let's kind of bring it. I know you said you um, met Matt and like, it seems like a lot of different things. Like you've met people like through social media and stuff. And like on the social bridge is something I always bring up because I think it's an important part of like the life that we live these days. Um, so maybe like talk about a little bit about your experience or like how social media has helped you, like, you know, kind of move forward with each different thing that you've done for the most part. You think you could speak on that? Yeah. So um, let me see. I, for instance, I went up to uh, Baltimore, Maryland for like a year or so. And during my time living up there, um, I didn't know anyone. It was a complete game changer going to seven and nine states over. And it was, it was major anxiety. I'm not going to lie to you, but it was really like nervous and like, I don't know anybody here. It's like, oh no, because living in... Ocala, you know everybody, and then when you decide to like go somewhere different, it's like you, you feel strange. <laughs> offhand, uh, so social media offhand, um, I had reached out to a couple people up in the Baltimore music scene and asked a couple people, it's like, hey, do you know any like music venues or? Do you know where people go for like local shows or is there anything like cool like emo night or whatnot going on? And I had a chance to connect with this guy named uh, Doug Gussio. Doug Gussio, he is a part of two businesses up in Baltimore, Maryland called Reverb. It's a venue up there and Manta Ray Records. Manta Ray Records is owned by a guy named Mike Diamond and um, for Mantray and for Reverb, and he's actually from Florida. He grew up and did it like some time down in uh, Gainesville, Florida. But he was a good person to reach out to, and he helped me do like a business internship. And when I took the knowledge when I was living up there for a year, and I came back down here, and it was very useful. And um, it's just kind of like one of those people you meet, and like it changes you completely. Yeah, no, I think that's awesome. I think that's, like, just a great example of where, like, social media really can be, like, a plus. I mean, it does come with, of course, like, a lot of negatives, but as all things tend to do anyway that I think are beneficial. Um, so I'm kind of – I love hearing that just because I think it's um, unique. I meet a lot of people through social media. I think a lot of business people these days meet a lot of people that they work with on social media. So I think it's a, it's a great, um, great tool if you know how to use it. Um, I know you said you did some of the social media stuff for Matt and stuff, correct? Or no? Yeah. Yeah, so you do that. Um, what are you like some like things that you could, would um, recommend for people that are like trying to get into the social media scene? Like maybe things that you do, tactics that you use, anything, tips and tricks, I guess. Um, 
Facebook is really good. Instagram's great. It's just kind of like putting yourself out there. Um, it's like sometimes like when you're when you make an event on Facebook, you throw in words. It's like, hey, by the way, um, there's a really peculiar but like unique market going on. Or like, hey, by the way, um, if you have nothing going on, make some plans for a show going on in downtown Ocala. Totally check it out. Um, and then you kind of like list down like. Like, you got bands coming from Orlando, or you got bands coming from Gainesville. Like, it's going to be like a evolving, like, melting pot because it's something different and kind of like putting yourself out there. It's like, yo, check this out. <laughs> yeah, no, I think bringing attention is, and like wording, I think is a great point. Um, it's super important to have good wording on, like, any social media stuff. I think that really makes, like, the most difference on any post, honestly. Like, because even if you don't have necessarily, like, your title correct, if somebody searches, like, moving to Ocala or... Um, you know, the Ocala Oddities Market or exciting event coming up, like, it'll generate it based off of, like, the words that you put inside of the, like, the description. So I think that's important. Um, it's a really good point. Um, but, you know, you're, are you, you're from Ocala, right? No, ma'am. You're not from Ocala. No. So where are you from originally? So um, I am from a military family. Mm -hmm. My dad, he served in the military army okay. for a good bit of time. Um so I'm, I'm Eastern Asian. <laughs> I'm from this, um, you, you like history? I do, by history. the way. Awesome. So, um, you know, like where Japan, blah, Hawaii, mm -hmm. Guam, yep. and uh, the Philippines yes. are? So back during uh, World War II, of like uh, Pearl Harbor, right? When Japan was taking over um, the islands and Hawaii, they're also taking over the islands over in the federal states of Micronesia. It's okay. called FSM. It's kind of like uh, Hawaii and the Philippines put together, okay. but not really developed, okay. if that makes sense offhand. But um, I come from like a little island called the federal states of Micronesia. Okay. Federal states of Micronesia, um, out of those five islands called Ponape. And okay. the really cool thing about um, the Eastern Asian islands is that those five islands, they're like super small. Um, federal states of micro my Micronesia is that they have their own special kind of dialect oh, cool. in those islands and the second language is English. Oh super cool. Offhand. So um I'm Eastern Asian, um Micronesian on my mom's side and then my dad he's like from uh, Boston, Massachusetts. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Oh interesting. So so were you born there or no? That was just where your mom's um, from. I'm born from Eastern Asian Islands okay. and I came to the States at five months old. Okay, so is your dad also the same, like, culture or different culture? Different culture. Different he's culture. from uh, Boston. Okay, so he's white. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was trying to figure out. Because yeah. I'm like, you could be from Boston and be anything. <laughs> yeah, my mom, she's okay. Asian. Okay. okay. My dad, he's from Boston. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's a combo. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, it's in comparison to my mom's family, they're, um, they're really sweet and really, like, people people my dad's family is of course too but they're more on like uh, the business side like um gotcha. some of my family members on my dad's side they all have something that they're good at or something that represents them like uh, my aunt judith contact chase she lives in nepal india and she deals with like the agricultural setup and she has like this really cool um like uh well, pretty much she told me i'm like what's going on with the agriculture how are you doing Aunt Judith she's like well you know like the day that I pass away um the agricultural will be passed off to the people in Nepal India so that's pretty cool and then I have a cousin um in the Carolinas called Allison she deals with uh, like the solar panels for the tiny houses okay and um this one aunt who is kind of like a professor up in uh, up north but they're pretty much they're all good at something and something to represent them, if that makes sense at all. Yeah, no, that makes yeah. sense. So have you been there where your mom's from originally? No. So you've never been there? Okay. No. I've been, um, never been out of the States. Okay. Um, I haven't either, so. Very good. Um, the farthest up north, I would have to say, has been Rochester, New York. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the farthest out west I've been has been Houston, Texas. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. there's still like a, a bucket list to check out like different places like um 
for instance, Seattle, Washington, Kurt Cobain, Nirvana, or like the Rockies of Nevada, or like uh, Jersey, or um, we even like Salem, like, because like, why not? <laughs> yeah, no, I always thought that was really cool, too. Yeah. Um, for our honeymoon, we drove to the Grand Canyon and back, so we, oh. so we went all the way out there and then came all the way back. It was absolutely amazing. How I many will, hours? Um, probably, I think, I think it takes like a day and a half to technically get there, so we, what we did is we went from Florida to Tennessee, and then from Tennessee, we stayed two days in Tennessee to two different places, and then we went to Oklahoma, which was like nothing there, it's just like flat. It is just, yeah, it was like, <laughs> it, I kind of got tired of seeing, like, flat land. I tell you, it was rough. Like, and what is this? <laughs> literally, it was just nothing. It was just nothing. Yeah. Um, so we stayed in Oklahoma, and then we drove from Oklahoma to Colorado, and we saw Mesa Verde, and that was great. Super cold, though. It was, like, really windy, too. But Colorado was super cool. I liked it a lot. Um, then we went to Utah, and then we went down, down, down to the Grand Canyon, and then stopped in Texas, and then back in the, we were um, in the Panhandle, and then we came home. So it was quite a... It was like a two-week road trip. So just yeah, just out of curiosity, I have sure. a question. Go for it. Did you guys listen to the radio, or do you like Spotify or Apple Music or SoundCloud? Um, well, we used we used Spotify a lot, and then we um, honestly like we got like some like question books and like asked each other questions and like oh, okay. did like a lot of like different things just because music gets old after a while. I love music, but what do you like to listen to? Um, I pretty much listen to like anything. I listen to like old stuff I listen to like the only thing I don't really love that much is like screamo I can't do the screamo like I can do hard rock but I can't do the screaming like that's just like the one thing my wife loves screamo I cannot I can just like it's like my it's like my cutoff is like I can listen to anything but that's not that and that's pretty much it that's something I won't listen to anything else I'm pretty open to for the most part for sure oh, what, yeah. what kind of music do you listen to oh dude it is a complete melting of a mixture of everything um being a promoter, you listen to all sorts of genres to like um, acoustic. I, I like acoustic, um, like offset acoustic, especially to like metal, to like screamo, to like uh, bluegrass, um, okay. to like uh, a little bit of a reggae. Um, but these days, I'm kind of like going back between uh, Incubus to Weezer to Red Hot Chili Peppers, to a even things like uh, J. Cole. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I know a lot of all of those older bands like have brought back like a bunch of new music, which I thought was super interesting. Yeah. We were like listening to it the other day, and I was like, oh, my God. Like, I'm like, but I'm like, I also am kind of like, I don't know if they're like as good as they used to be, but that's just my opinion. But they're still pretty good for the most part, I guess. It'd be nice to see some like new people come on the scene and really like hit it big. We'll see what happens. Uh, by the way, just You're have to include, um, you ever heard of uh, the band called Attila? It sounds familiar, but I don't think so. It's kind of like from the original Warp Tour days. Um, I have a, a couple buddies that are from the South Florida music scene called uh, Royal Hearts. Totally check them out, by the way. Um, Spotify, Apple, all that good jazz. They are opening up with Attila at the underbelly in October. Oh, that's so that's like cool. a, a big accomplishment because the underbelly is kind of like a, the house of blues. It's like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, no, that's super awesome. Um, so what do you think about like the growth in Ocala and how much, because we didn't really finish that. So when did you end up moving here? Um, probably like my child years. Okay, so you likely. grew up here. For You're sure. just not from here. Yeah. Okay, I got you, I got you. Um, so, like, what do you think about Ocala's growth and, like, how much it's changed, I'm sure, since, like, because you're, like, the same age as me since we were kids? Yeah. Um, it's completely game-changer for the music scene and looking at, like, the different events going on. Um, also, like, from, for instance, some people would remember this, um, the original Ocala skate park to the new skate park they have going on in Tuscaloosa right now. It's really cool. Um, to, like... Let me see. It's kind of like car shows and a whole bunch of other things and um, a whole bunch of people coming in and, you know, making whole new connections and stuff. No, I think, I think, I'm actually happy to hear that you think Ocala's Grove's pretty good because a lot of people feel kind of like melancholy about it. Like, it's great, but they're also like, I don't know about it. Kind of like in the middle. So it's kind of nice to hear somebody that's like glad to see the growth. I, as a realtor, of course, like I like the growth. Like it's a good thing for my pocketbook. But at the same time, I like kind of miss like country Ocala just a little bit. 
Christian. Like the simplicity and like just like seeing like cows and stuff. So I'm interested to see where it's gonna go like in the next like five to ten years, because I'm not too sure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we'll see where it goes. Well, I mean, like uh, one of the venues downtown, it's owned by a guy named Sam Betty and Chris Wees. Um, when you go to downtown Ocala, right by the theater, and you go watch a show at Mutiny, you're right up against the music, offhand, and pretty much the band is playing right in front of you. And that's like completely different. And then they have like this really cool octopus kraken made by this guy named Teddy um, in downtown Ocala. And like that's a, it's a really different venue in comparison to the other venues in Ocala. Yeah, and I definitely think Mutiny is different. I don't know if, it's not always my scene. I personally just like O'Malley's better. I just like how chill it is. That's just me. Yeah. Like, I just, I, um, there's something about um, O'Malley's. It's just much more of a vibe for me. But Mutiny definitely, like, I like, like, the decor and, like, the, like, um, ambiance that they've created there is, like, really, it's pretty yeah. solid. It's definitely different for Ocala. Also, like, uh, Tiffy Skipper mm-hmm. and um, I think, let me see. O'Malley's is great, too. I like O'Malley's. Um, I used to go shows, watch shows there, like things like uh, Bay Street and whatnot. And, uh, yeah. No, I know. O'Malley's has definitely changed a lot. I think they're kind of getting back to, like, how things used to be. So I'm interested to see to see how that stuff goes. But towards the end of the podcast, I always ask the person that I'm interviewing, um, you know, I would love to hear your advice to anybody that's looking to get into any type of entrepreneurship or build their career I think everybody's story is unique, and I, I like to hear what people have to say with what advice that they would give somebody. The, the BTS projects offhand, um, like, when you're, when you're finding a career or something that you want to do with life, um, I feel like th- think about for a moment um, and then see where it goes offhand. And there's been times um, having the business to where I – um, I just kind of want to stop it or like, you know, you, you put you put the business idea down because you're not sure if you want to do it or not or you, like you keep on putting it down and then you pick it up offhand. Um, and there's always going to be like negative comments from people, um, for instance, but at the end of the day, um, finding something that represents you and being true to yourself for sure. Yeah, no, I think, I definitely think finding something that um, really, like, feels, like, I guess, I guess feels good to you and that you enjoy doing is super important. I actually talked to Amanda about that when she was on, and she was like, that's the biggest thing for me. It's like, I don't want to do something that's not enjoyable in my life, and I, and I can 100%, like, get that. I think it's important to remember that when you're working, you really don't want to feel like you're working all the time and that you're, you know, stressed out. I mean, like, it's just part of life to be stressed out to a certain degree, no matter what business you do, even if you love it. But I think at least at the end of the day, you, like, enjoy what you're doing. And it sounds to me like you enjoy, like, what mm-hmm. you do. But I think this went pretty well, Raven, and I appreciate you coming on and, you know, doing this interview with me. Thank you. All right. Well, you guys have a great rest of your day, and I hope you enjoy this interview. Have a great one. Bye-bye.